Hello, what's going on? Hot damn. Man, <laughs> so I realized after talking for, let's see here. <laughs> I realized after talking for an hour on, well, I guess it was Friday's stream, my mic and speakers were backwards or something. <laughs> and and it didn't work. And I didn't even notice until TradingView sent me a message and said they're taking my stream down because I violated terms of service. I was like, what the hell? What? No. And they're like, oh, because it was silent. And I go back and play it. And I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> and not one person said anything in the uh, chat. So don't be afraid to type some stuff in the chat, especially if it's something like that. Because derp, oh well, stuff happens, right? What are you going to do? And so now I'm going to double check real quick and make sure that this audio is working. From what I can see, it does look like I'm getting little uh, spikes on my audio deal a bopper thing. So I'm just going to double check real fast here. Stuff happens, right? Oh, there it goes. You can probably hear it in the background. Man, what a derp moment. But anyway... It's good now. It's working now. Just wasted an hour of a time. It's the silent mime version of my uh, podcast or stream uh, last week. All right. Anyway, what's up? Happy Monday. I hope y'all are doing awesome. It's the start of a new week, new trading week, a full trading week, too, because we had a shortened trading week last week. So... Let's go ahead and just jump right into it. We've got plenty to talk about. All right, let me just check something real quick. I'm working some orders right now in some of the Mary Jane space, which I talked about in the last video. We'll go touch on that here a little bit after I do the rundown for um, the normal stuff we like to look at. And let's uh, go ahead and start with the Mama Bear. So Mama Bear... Got a nice little pump on the weekend. Not too shabby. Right up to the major trend line. Uh, I did make a higher high on the daily, so that's pretty cool. That's a good job by the bulls. Can't be mad about that. Let's zoom out to the uh, weekly. See how the weekly closed. Weekly closed right up underneath this trend line. Not too surprising to get a little shot to the trend line. It is nice that we're seeing um, a girthy candle for the weekly instead of this little shit candle over here the doji which we kind of have mentioned a couple times in the last streams so that i mean that's a little bit better it is up against major resistance but hey this is a, a lot more better from bulls than we've seen you know in over a year or so you can't knock that i do like that uh so as long as we're getting again it's the same as the last videos uh, as long as we're just getting this to kind of flip around and get the bulls to stay above about you know 19 and a half 20k or so it's looking pretty constructive now are we at major resistance right here yeah most definitely i would be surprised if we keep pumping past this um it would actually be more constructive because this is straight vertical right here uh, it would actually be more constructive from bulls if they do kind of stall out and let the bears kind of take it, and maybe retest like 20k instead of just getting this. We don't, you never want just straight vertical action because that's generally met with straight vertical action in the opposite direction at some point. Um, but the Bart pattern has a playing out pretty funny. Haven't seen one of those in a while. Uh, we talked about those too the other day. We I haven't seen one in a hot minute. If you don't know what that is, it's like this little choppy thing right here. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. They used to pop up in crypto all the time. It kind of looks like uh, Bart Simpson's head, right? It's not no official pattern or nothing. Man, that's some good English right there. Anyway, but we are coming up on major resistance. I do think it'd be more constructive for bulls to kind of just chill out here, get a little liquidation break, and come back into the 20K handle before taking off. That would actually look super sexy uh, for price action. Because uh, if we just keep going vertical, and if we just keep breaking out of this and just keeping this trajectory, um, you can bet your bottom dollar that at some point it's probably going to give up half of that in a very violent fashion. So 
you never want to just keep going straight up. That's not very constructive. Um, so, but very nice. Good move. Bulls on the weekly are looking pretty good. So I do like that candle a lot. This weekly close is pretty sexy. Let's go to the futures. And even futures are coming up to major resistance. Is it about 23, 24,000 is the uh, overhead spot there. And where did this weekly touch? <clears throat> 23, 362. So 23, 4-ish. So yeah, that is definitely a major resistance. But you can't deny that this candle does look pretty damn good. See if we can stay up here for another uh, couple weeks like we've been talking about. Uh, wow, actually, the end of the month is freaking only a week away. Damn, that's fast. All right, so the monthly will be coming in uh, very quickly. I didn't realize it's already the 23rd. Holy moly. Um, so we'll go to the jump. We'll go jump to the monthly chart too since my stream on Friday. I derped up with the audio and talked to myself for an hour. That was great. But anyway, this does uh, look pretty uh, constructive. Just need to maybe take a little break here. So we don't just keep getting this vertical insanity. Yeah, I know it's great and it's awesome and everyone's getting moony. But it's just these aren't sustainable. Um, you can't just have straight up moves uh, for long periods of time. Uh, that just generally don't work. Uh, let's go to Ethereum. Uh, kind of, yeah, kind of the same thing. A little bit not as sexy, but hey, we did make a higher high. It's not an open and close higher high which would be um, above about 1600. So, I mean, but it is a decent attempt, but you can see, I mean, we're rallying right up to major resistance. So we definitely aren't out of the woods, but it's the most constructive that it's looked for almost a year. So that's good. So bulls are trying to do something. Let's see if they can keep up the momentum. Um, Ethereum's a little bit shy from its trend line where Bitcoin has already hit it, which is kind of surprising because Ethereum's been leading the market for you know even in the last bull run ethereum led the market and ethereum also didn't make lower uh, lows on the daily um, or the weekly for that matter here which we discussed briefly in the last video so um, that that's interesting that it didn't even have enough power to meet up to the trend line like uh, mama bear did so hmm. all right well mama bear is maybe taking its reins back uh, but anyway, still pretty constructive. I like this. It's the same tune as the last video. You know, when we, we're looking at weekly charts, I mean, most of the stuff is going to be the same video to video, you know, for a while. And it's just kind of like above this 1420 area. Uh, we still keep building candles above that. I mean, it, it's, it looks sexy. Oh, and one chart we're going to go look at here in a second is the hash ribbon chart. I uh, forgot to go look at that because it does show something that's kind of interesting on Bitcoin that I don't know if I've seen before. Let's go to Ethereum. Uh, futures, kind of same thing. We do have a little gap here from 1420 to about 1540-ish. So that's interesting. You know, that would be very lovely to get filled by the bulls. And we also have a same type gap here. For a Bitcoin, that would be real lovely to get filled before continuation on this potential um, bull run. So, man, that would do we we do that and start picking back momentum and get over here back above like 22k. Man, that would look super sexy for price. Uh, let's go to Litecoin. What is Charlie doing? Charlie is still looking pretty decent. It does have a little bit of a doji here from uh, this week's close. So I don't. I'm not too fond of that. I don't really like that, especially since Litecoin, funny enough, like led this rally way back in October. So that's kind of hilarious. But um, you can't knock higher highs, higher lows. And I mean, until this is back below like 80 bucks, I mean, it's not it's not bearish. This is only one of the only coins. There's about three or four that look pretty good. But, you know, it's the only one, a handful of coins that are actually uh, making higher highs and higher lows on a weekly basis, which is nothing to uh, scoff at, that's for sure. So not too shabby. Let's go to uh, the classic. Man, nothing here really changed. Kind of lackluster price action right on the 21, right above the 200. So we didn't get any new information from the week. I mean, it's just squeezed all up in there. Well, let's see. We are trying to get an attempt by garlic bread over here. He's trying to pump it. 
I mean, this actually looks pretty decent above 40 cents. Everyone's favorite super crypto coin that's going to change the world. Ripple here. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, daily is even agreeing with about 40 cents. I mean, above 40 cents, it's all right. But again, we're coming up on this major resistance level, just like so many other charts are doing. Um, also, if you want me to look at anything, feel free to type it in the chat box and we will go check it out after I go down through the uh, run list here. And I'm trying to go through these a little bit faster um, so we can go hunting for other stuff, um, especially when there's just not that much new information. Uh, we, the only new info we got was kind of that nice girthy candle for the weekly close on Bitcoin. Um, is it enough? Almost. The open and close above the 21 is definitely noteworthy, and especially when it doesn't look like a doji. So I do like that. So bulls are definitely making themselves known for sure. So that's nice. Anyway, back to XLM. Right up under the 21. Eh, whatever. Not really anything too sexy there. Same with Tron. Kind of filling out this descending triangle even more. Crypto loves its triangles. Hardcore, if you haven't noticed, in uh, crypto, if you're new, it, it freaking loves triangles and Fibonacci's. Those are probably the things I see respected the most in crypto. Although I have seen the triangles get filled out and just keep going sideways longer, which is pretty rare. You don't see that very often. Uh, let's go dot, same crap, whatever. ADA, same shit, whatever, don't care. Link, also no new info on that for the weekly. Same with EOS. Bitcoin Cash is trying to do a little bit more. It did have an open and close above the 21 and this trend line. So that's kind of sexy. I'd say this looks pretty good above 120. Maybe you can get a little shot up here to, you know, maybe like 150s or so. If the if Mama Bear can hold up and keep going, that's not too shabby. Uh, BSV. This chart is just... Uh, no one likes Craig, I guess. And it doesn't have that many places it trades on either so it's just kind of yeah, it's kind of meh i mean whatever look at this it's kind of sloppy no volume uh, let's just skip that crap uh xmr is one of the other coins like litecoin and ton which we'll get to here in a second um that is attempting to make higher highs and higher lows we do have an official open and close above the range we have a higher low right here to this Local low, I mean, so that like XMR looks pretty damn good above like 160 ish, 164 ish. I mean, not too shabby. We're even above the mama, and the mama is the purple line there. That's just an Ellers. Uh, it's actually called the mama moving average. You can get it on mine's a little bit tweaked, but you can get it on uh, for free on the indicators. Just look up Ellers mama. I think it's very, very useful. It's like a Pretty cool dynamic uh, moving average. Uh, but you can see uh, we are actually attempting to break it with this little hammer. Maybe, you know, if we really on the shorter time frames, let's zoom in a little bit. Really, it's like kind of this 170 area. You start losing like 170, you can question this move. Um, and that's on the daily, but on the weekly, it is about 162 ish or so. But definitely looking a little bit different than other coins. Uh, Zcash is like every most everything else. It can't really get going here. I mean, there's just, I don't really see anything on here that's different. Maybe on the daily, you can argue about 45 handle above that is okay. But you got the 200 right above it. It's just kind of, it's just squeezing into, I and I, <clears throat> it's squeezing into the long term and holding the short term. This is real dangerous trading right here because it can just blow up either way. Uh, when they get kind of pushed into, I mean, you can kind of see this trajectory and then like something like this. So when it gets squeezed into this stuff, <clears throat> it's real hard to know. I mean, I guess no one ever knows, right? The direction, but it's definitely, um, it's definitely, what's the word I'm looking for? Just more difficult and risky uh, when you get those squeezes like that. I like when all of the indicators uh, or not all the indicators but all the moving averages have similar slope on them dash dash is uh, looking a little bit better but again right up against these trend lines man like this is just the same story from last week you know now we've rallied up to them a little bit closer and mama bears rallied up to them uh, so bulls really need to defend 
some of these price action moves that they've done in the last couple of weeks and start breaking to the upside and start making higher highs now and higher lows to build an actual bullish uh, regime change. Because otherwise, it could just turn into you know bear market rallies and then get faded. So, um, and don't do not think that that can't happen. I know no one likes to hear that in crypto. They just want to hear moon boy shit, but it just doesn't work that way. Um, let's see. We're close though. It's the bulls are doing better than they have in like a year or so. So that's pretty nice. Dogecoin kind of same thing. Just uh, it's above its 200 and the mama's nice and flat right here at about 7.8 cents. So I I actually do like Doge a lot above about the upper 7 cent handle. That's pretty sexy. Anything back below like seven and a half pennies, I would question the strength of the bulls here. Hex coin, eh, meh, whatever. It's eh, Richard Hart menace. Uh, it did have a nice little pump right here. It looks like kind of off the 618. Yeah, right off the 618. So that's nice. We start getting back above. And this is supposed to be pennies. I don't know why the data feed is doing this now on TradingView. Just started doing that recently. But, you know, just do two point something. It's a, this is pennies it's like 2.2 cents it's definitely not worth uh two million dollars richard hart might tell you that but it's it's not um so above you know about maybe two cents it's okay again just watching mama bear and unicorn shirt man seeing what they're doing h and t pump and then you've got indecision shooting star type doji eh, whatever not my favorite setup there V chain. Oh, look, another one on right on the uh, 21. Shocker. It does have an okay candle right here. I mean, I guess you could argue about two cents above two cents. It's all right. But again, most stuff is going to weigh on Mama Bear following through. If Mama Bear, aka Bitcoin, starts getting above 24,000, a lot of these coins will probably rally to their medium term averages, which is going to be the 55, is kind of what I consider the medium term. So you start seeing Mama Bear clear 24. A lot of these uh, shit coins are going to be running uh, up to those 55s or, you know, maybe just to structure if 55 is too high. Like the 55 here is like way up at nine cents right now. You know, it'd probably be more realistic to tap this, you know, several months of business here in this example specifically. But let's see, Adam, same thing, attempting breakouts right up under major resistance. So we're almost there. It's just the, it's like almost super bullish, just almost. Uh, Cosmos, or sorry, Osmos, <laughs> Adam's Cosmos. It's kind of confusing. Um, yeah, whatever, just right up underneath there. Ton is another one like Litecoin and Monero, where it's actually been making higher highs, higher lows. This has actually been doing it since the summer, last summer. So this actually looks independent of all mama bear and everything else this is very bullish above two bucks now is it kind of stalling here the last month like pretty much this year yeah a little bit it definitely is and again that's probably riding on the backs of bitcoin breaking that 24k you know like if bitcoin doesn't break 24,000 a lot like most of these coins aren't going to keep rallying um you know because that's why i call it mama bear they all look up to Mama Bear. All right, let's go to majors now. We've got ES. ES is doing a pretty nice little pumpage. It's it's also doing the same thing, trying to get bullish. We do have a potential higher low on the weekly being put in here. Now, it's not confirmed because we haven't made a higher high yet. So we're still in a downtrend. Um, this is the first part you need for a change in momentum is a higher low on this but this isn't considered higher low until you actually do get the higher high and then that confirms that is a higher low so we get above like 4080 on es which is the s p 500 futures we do that which most people probably know that a spy they use spy to do that i trade mostly futures so but you can see here if we can get over about 4080 then this would be considered a higher low and then we would have a higher high and the trend could be changing and gives us a lot more um, conviction to start like buying dips on 
futures and even into the stock market because just like mama bear bitcoin is you know oh sorry hold on let me rephrase that just like bitcoin is mama bear to the crypto market the es and nasdaq are the mama bears to the stock market you know like most stuff isn't going to rally hard if the indices are just looking like shit so but almost there too here it's just so funny we're just almost there on like almost every chart you freaking look at it is pretty wild crypto or normie markets it's it's very very interesting i mean even oils like that we're gonna get to oil here in a second but again we're attempting to break out here but we still need that same you know we got this little potential higher low but we don't have the higher high yet which is at about twelve thousand on nasdaq so close but is the cigar there yet maybe the one that does have it oh actually i take that back because it doesn't have i mean i guess this is kind of a higher low here with the higher high this one's a little sloppier this is different than most of the indices um just off of this chart though above the 200 now you have all the slopes of the moving averages you got the 21 the 55 the 200 all pointing up and the mamas attempting to point up right here you can see so i mean that's actually pretty constructive so the dow is looking the best out of the indices and as long as it's holding about 33k this is actually a pretty damn nice setup the one thing i don't like is this daily that it's just lollygagging around here if bulls were really that strong they should be able to already have attempted to hit 36k right here this next little block of resistance and they haven't been able to do that so you know you have to think what do bulls do they make the price go up if they're not doing that over an extended period of time you have to start questioning their strength and we're kind of also um, this potential break but also major resistance right above it with structure and everything so all right let's see russell same thing major resistance right here at about 19 real low 1900s about 1910 we get a weekly open and close above that we can probably look for a run to you know close to 2000 i would see uh, in the cards there um let's see uh, other than that vix yeah who cares vix is broken right now so we're just gonna skip that shit uh, here's another example of that trend line i mean this is just the same shit as last week we you know weekly charts most of the stuff is going to be the same so we're just right up against major resistance attempting to break out uh, but not quite confirmed yet and again the end of this month i do think we will have some type of clarification on that nat gas just kind of chilling down here it is attempting to stall let's see in the daily it's attempting to stall, and we do have a nice volume on this doji candle so maybe this is a little base here i might re-enter this as a long trade because i do kind of like this candle setup right here on the doji with a pretty good amount of volume and so oh, hold up wait i got the wrong measuring tool out here oh crap you know and this is pretty low risk now it's only about four percent so yeah i might nibble on that later we'll see uh, after i get off stream here look at some stuff bonds are attempting to make higher highs higher lows this is kind of even high so it's not super sexy but there is most definitely a trend line right here uh, so if that keeps running up you know we do have a pretty good floor at about 128 i know most people don't trade bonds so we'll probably just kind of skip that they're definitely important to watch um wow the 10 years that actually is making a higher high and higher lows well that's interesting is this calling is this calling the fed out that they're not going to keep hiking rates very much could be very much could be but again this between getting squeezed we look at this 200 right here dictating price and we got the shorter term moving averages i do not like taking trades and prices between here it is just too risky um and it, while while it does look good the first attempt of getting into this zone right here is just it's a lot of fuckery that's for sure tnx is just showing the the 10 year inverse gold made a little doji last week so that's interesting and silver's already backing off which we'll get to in a second so i kind of don't like that um what about gdx yeah gdx is backing off at that major resistance as well so 
you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little break here. Um, the best thing for because this is also kind of like crypto where it's just rallied super, super hard. Um, and it, it's not sustainable. Shit just doesn't go in a straight line forever, right? Like that just doesn't work that way. And so if we could come back and retest the upper 1800s, that would actually look pretty good. And then maybe have, <clears throat> excuse me, and then maybe do some continuation from there. That would actually look pretty sexy. So uh, we're just trying to kind of watch that and go from there. Uh, silver, silver, this is disappointing in silver. That 2420 level that we've been talking about on the last few videos is getting rejected. And now I'm getting some flags that silver is actually done on this rally. And again, when if bulls are in control, what do bulls do? They make the price go up. But you keep going sideways and sideways and you can't get past major resistance levels, which is that 2420 level, and you don't get any follow through, you have to question their strength because they shouldn't just be lollygagging for so long up there. They should make an at least an attempt to break through and they have not done so. And now we're getting selling pressure. And you know, if this daily, we start getting back below like 23 bucks, uh, that's going to suck for silver. And we might see uh, maybe a retest of, you know, 22 ish upper 21s and have to go from there. Um, but not too great uh, on that price action. Losing $22 would be real bad on silver. Platinum looks okay still above about a thousand bucks. I don't really hate this chart. This one looks pretty damn constructive. Lots of support at like 980 to a thousand dollars. So uh, not too shabby there. Palladium is just in the shitter. That's just, there's nothing sexy about that chart right now. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see GDX has kind of come to this major 32 handle is super resistance there. And so Bulls in this also need to, or precious metal bulls need to also clear this level uh, to get some good, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm lost for words today. I guess it is Monday. To get some good uh, confluence with spot action on gold and silver. So we want them to both be riding up because if miners aren't going up and gold's going up, that's not great. So we're going to see the same thing over here. And GDXJ, same crap. All right, now let's go to the weed stocks because my stupid audio wasn't working. That was my fault, though. Stupid me, not really the audio. Uh, let's go to the weekly. I'm just going to touch on this real fast. And yes, it is an indice, or not an indice, sorry, an ETF. Um, and it doesn't mean the whole sector, right? But it is noteworthy because it is on some of the smaller stocks, too. Like Tilray, I know that's a popular one people like to watch, even though they're like kind of a little bit crazy and moon boyish. But hey, isn't that the weed sector? It's kind of similar to shit coins. But anyway, what I want to share here is we've got three stabs of bullish divergence on the weekly We got, that go all the way back to the summer. We got one, two, and three. So that, that coincides with these arrows right here that I'm showing. So that's pretty interesting to me. Three stabs of bullish divergence or bearish divergence. When you get three of them, that's generally a pretty good turning point, and especially on a weekly. So I'm definitely watching this extremely close right now. And if we go to MJ, which is the American version, uh, HMMJ is the Canadian ETF. And this is kind of the, this is the American one. So you can see the same thing, boom boom and boom so we got three stabs on a weekly that's very interesting and also if you look at let's see wait sorry that was on hmmj let me go back to that real quick you can see this too a ride right on this long-term trend line goes way way back so we're on this major trend line we've got three stabs and also 420s coming up here in a few months and usually you get some kind of stupid rally for 420. It sometimes it's shit. Like you can see here, it was like right before it, and that was about it. You know, it still was about a 20% move right before it, but it got just faded immediately. But usually you get some kind of hype um around that. So I just like the confluence around the timing of all this and having those three stabs and right on this trend line. And you can even see Tilray, I'll just show a couple of them. It has the same kind of structure. Boom, boom, boom. 
three stabs and you can see higher lows on the oscillator aka rsi very interesting and i just like these right here for kind of low risk entries so i'm working some orders right now staying small because you know it's not a super high conviction trade because um weed is just it really needs approval from some fed stuff or i hate to even say that but that's it is what it is but it needs some kind of approval or descheduling or something from the fed that makes it more a legitimate business because right now you still can't put money in banks and all that kind of crap it's deemed still federally illegal and all that and that's kind of just been dampering the weed space for a long time i mean you can see this shit is it looks worse than crypto shit coins you know you're gonna have to go all the way back to freaking 2019 it's just been pretty much selling off the whole time so but hey maybe we're at an inflection point right here you know i could totally see the current administration doing something to entice voters to keep them in if uh, they do something with weed right now so you know we still got plenty of time for that acb aurora cannabis also has that same type of structure one two three stabs so that's just something i wanted to share with y'all oh because i didn't well i did show it on friday but my mic was foobard so whatever uh let's look at some miners let's go to the miner index that i got uh, and you can make these up yourself if you want. If you're ever watching like a little basket of stuff, you can just go up here and you just type in the tickers in the plus symbol and it'll just add them all up for you. You can see in the background on my watermark uh, which ones it is, or you can also look up here. And I know there's more, but I just wanted uh, the most kind of relevant data. And if I start adding the other ones and it's like literally only like a year or two and it's not that useful. So I kind of settled on uh, these ones here. And I use this kind of like GDX for the crypto space, but still lower lows, lower highs. We're not breaking trend on the miners yet. And we, we really need to do that. And we're a major resistance here too. Um, just like so many other charts. Um, so almost there, but we just, we just need more. We need more. Hi, what's going on, Mr. John? Or what is it? At Cronin John? We'll just call you John. I see John at the end there. Hope you're having a good day, man. Cores, this is a miner out of Dallas, Texas. Um, I do hold some of this one. It's just kind of been all over the place for me, but I'm using options on it, so I got defined risks. So that's fine. I'm just, and I'm way out like a year or two, so I'm just like, whatever. Bitcoin miner stuff. It's actually one of the bigger ones, apparently, in Texas. Um, yeah, go look into them. Check them out. I don't know. That's, of course, this is not advice. I'm just some idiot on TradingView, whatever. They don't listen to me. But go do your own research. Check them out. I don't know. Some of them might be worth a shot. I'm taking a shot at it, whatever. It's cheap enough. And like I said, they do have options, which is surprising on a uh, 11 cent stock. You usually don't see that. So, you're welcome for the rundown, Mr. Armadillo. Oh, let's see. What else do we got? Oh, look. Silvergate's trying to pump right here. It's up 15 16% today. Uh, but look where it's pumped to, right to the 21. Eh. And they're tied to a lot of the shenanigans lately of FTX and Genesis and all that crap. So, I wouldn't necessarily be touching this one. My friend says, and he does a lot of fundamental stuff, and he says that they're okay, but yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. How about Overstock? What's Overstock doing? Because they mooned hard a couple times in the crypto thing. Well, they did. They look like shit right now. Let me erase this. It's a little busy. Just some fib action. Yeah, same thing. Lower highs, lower lows. Just meh. Whatever, man. Oh, let's go look at exchange tokens real fast. I do like some of these exchange tokens. There is one that's kind of defying the odds, and it's also getting a lot of volume too, which I don't understand why um, OKB is just, this is OKX token. I mean, it has just been pumping, man. Like, it's been pumping since last summer. Look at this. And if you go look up like it, 
Oh, what is it? Node. There's a lot of glass node and stuff like that, depending on if you have subscriptions or not. I'm trying to think of the free one. I'll figure it out and post that one later. But there's a there is a free one and it shows exchange volume. And just since all this stuff happened with FTX and Celsius, they have been gaining a lot of momentum for some reason um, and users. So I'm not sure why OKX is doing that, but apparently the market really likes it because it's been pumping really hard, man. I mean, look at this. This is from 15 to 36, just from like October. Um, very, very interesting. And it is making a new high on the structure. It's last attempt here is, oh, look at that at 42, 42. Ha ha ha. Anyway, it looks pretty good above uh, about 30 bucks. Just very interesting on that one. Let's see. Waves. Mm, it's not making no waves. It's getting taken down by the waves and current. And none of these look pretty good. I mostly wanted to just share that uh, OKB token. I thought that was kind of interesting. Let's go look at Binance. Binance going sideways. Man, look at this chart. Binance is kind of interesting here. Chop Fest 3000 getting squeezed between all the oscill or all the uh, MAs. Just kind of that's interesting, man. And I know there's been a lot of talk about Binance being the next FTX or some shit or whatever. And I don't, I don't know about that. The daily is starting to turn. We are starting to get slopes all up so that's that's pretty good for bulls see if they can move up into the weekly and get above like 330 um cz might be starting to get its pump on i don't know very interesting uh, chart though here just kind of super sideways and kucoin's token is kind of just chilling between the 200 getting super squeezed too doji under the 21 not my favorite setup there again how many charts have we looked at that look like that like 95 percent of them so all right i think that might be it i don't see any tickers in the chat box in the troll box if you want me to look at anything before i sign off please feel free to throw it in there i was looking up thorium the other uh week oh this is kind of interesting thorium stuff I know it's like far away or whatever, but these, these are, there are some pretty interesting charts here, kind of like this, higher highs, higher lows, and that goes all the way back to, you know, Corona crash. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on that one. Does not look very sexy at all. Um, but yeah, something, you know, kind of nuclear stuff. I do think nuclear will flip around. It has been, I mentioned this in the last video on Friday, which you couldn't hear, but, you know, nuclear, the narrative is kind of flipping on it um it's becoming a little bit more deemed green than it has before in the past so if that keeps flipping you know they could totally use that with the esg crap and all that and you know if they start selling it as green energy um because of the new tech or whatever nuke stuff could do very well in the uh future which it has, some of it has rallied pretty good. You can even see like Bloom Energy here. This is a pretty nice saucer pattern right there. So I do like that. Oh, nope. Can't answer that right now. Sorry. So I do kind of like that. So I don't know. I know like you, 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 you is one that a lot of people talk about. And, you know, to be fair, it's just been consolidating at these highs. So let's go out to a monthly because this chart's been around for a while. All the way back to... Jesus Christ, 2007 has just been pooping all over itself. Ouch, that looks like freaking shit coin from hell. But hey, this is actually pretty decent, just consolidating up here for a while. Um, you could, I just like to look at both sides. You could kind of argue this is a head and shoulders right here on a monthly. So um, again, I would probably just be looking at this as range. So above like five bucks it looks pretty decent um let's go down to the weekly yeah about 550 five, 550 it looks okay we start getting above like seven seventy five eight dollars man i'd be looking this to tap 10 and you clear 10 shit let's go look at some fibonacci extensions from this local high uh 10 you could probably go to 13 which is probably where that line came from and then after 13, it's kind of moonshotting from there. But again, this is on the backs of lots of policy changes and the narrative of nuclear keeping uh, keeping up uh, as ESG and 
and green now, so whatever. Because everyone's hated it for so long, man. Um, let's see. I think that's is all this. Uh, let's look at some meme stocks. Oh, look, right up to the 21. Wow, never seen that before. Oh, look, up to the 21. Never seen that before. Oh, snap, look, same thing. Although we do have a nice engulfing right here, so GME above 19 bucks. Hell, you can just buy this and destroy the banking cartel, apparently. <laughs> I don't know if y'all remember that. Oh, kill the hedge funds, bro. That was so silly. I mean, I guess it was kind of cool, but it's like, dude, yeah, right. They're going to kill hedge funds from one stock. That's cute, though. It was a cute little run. Um, and I, I know a lot of people made some buku money off of that, so good on them. But to pretend you're going to destroy the banking cartel and hedge funds is, yeah, maybe one went under, but there's freaking hundreds of those stupid things. Anyway, uh, major, major resistance is like, 24 25 bucks so let's look at virgin galactic oh look doji at the 21 another one shit dude like what the f like get this shit out of here man it's like the whole freaking market is just trading the same it's just so frustrating god at all of those like almost every one i just clicked through look the same look at that so crazy man it's like everybody is just on the exact same page it's very very odd uh let's look at some sector majors what's pumping today this is just all the major etfs so semiconductors huh a little semiconductor pump wow this is actually a pretty decent inverted head and shoulders here on attempted breakout i kind of like this above 225 is pretty sexy what is intel doing on that Oh, god damn it. Below the 21. Shocker. AMD? Above it, but still uh, right at it in the 200. And right below all this resistance at about 78, 80 bucks. And also a trend line. Oh my god, it's the same freaking story, man. Just stop it. Stop it. Damn it. Uh, let's see. Top traded. What's popping off in the, these are like the top traded stocks by volume. NVIDIA. What's NVIDIA doing? Also an inverted head and shoulders breaking out of a down sloping channel. This actually is pretty sexy right here. Interesting. Is that off the 618? Yes, it is. Off the 618 and 200. Potential three white soldiers pattern on a weekly i mean this actually could be getting pretty bullish above like 175 man interesting interesting really got to clear 190 but nvidia hmm all right that's different see i love finally seeing something different that's not stupid up against the trend line up against the stupid 21 and 200 so nvidia is doing something a little bit different very nice sticking with semiconductors oh uh, oh here's a good example of the three stab stuff i was showing with the weed stonks you got one two and trace right here and then you get a nice super pump up to you know it's not making a higher high yet but you can see uh, the three stabs on the weekly i mean this came in real fast too all the way up to the top of range so that was a nice pump right there especially for uh, Micron. Very sexy time. Uh, let's see. Okay, nice. I'm getting under an hour here. That's what I've been trying to do. I'm only at 44 minutes and I ran down a lot of stuff. I know I go fast and pump out a lot of different things, but um, you know, I'm just trying not to make the stream freaking four hours long or whatever. Oh, Disney, look at this. Here's a great example of when you get failed breakdowns or breakouts, you get fast moves in the opposite direction. And this is a really good example of that. Descending triangle, looks like it's breaking down, stalls, gets an immediate pump back into the triangle. Whenever this happens, this is a very high probability setup to touch the other side of range which is about on this uh, formation is about 107 bucks. You can see we're pretty much there already, but generally these happen super fast too. So if you're an options trader, uh, you can use um, shorter term options to capture 
some of that uh, action there. So if you're not familiar with options, that probably doesn't make any sense. But um, using that shorter term, you know, gamma and some delta in your favor right there is uh, can be very lucrative um, trades right uh, in that realm, especially when you see these types of failed breakdowns or breakouts. Uh, so Disney, this is actually pretty nice. Disney, I would argue, looks pretty damn good above about 97 bucks. I like that. What's Netflix doing? Hey, it's actually been pumping since early summer. Look at that. When no one was ever going to watch Netflix. So this is actually doing something different too. It's above the 55. It's above the mama. It's above the 21. It does have major resistance at about 400 bucks. But hey, it's been making higher highs, higher lows on a weekly for freaking six months. So there you go. I don't know if Ed Reed's still over there, but not too shabby, dude. Let's see what Robots Man's doing. Nah, pff, lame. Don't care about that one. Disney, what's Disney? Wait, we just did that one. Dirt. Bank of America, Chop Fest 3000. Oh, shit, man. This is crazy, Chop Fest. I don't like solid lines. That's an old line. We need to change that to the dotted. Uh, major resistance on here at about 36 bucks, but hey, man, it's it's attempting. We got higher highs. We got a higher high right here, higher low. Uh, this one's close as a higher low. You could probably chalk that up as a higher low. I know technically it did wick down a little bit lower, but I mean, you can't be splitting all the cunt hairs. That's just, you know, this isn't an exact science, so you got to give a little wiggle room sometimes. If it was an exact science, everybody would be making billions of dollars. It'd be too easy, right? Uh, Amazon, eh, right up against the 21, so meh. Let me get rid of this stupid trend line. Don't need that. What's Apple doing? Apple, shit. Apple's actually broke down from this structure and is just attempting and retesting the bottom of this structure. So this is an interesting spot for Apple. Um, this is kind of a make it or break it. We get back above here and consider this a false breakout. You know, we could have a nice run to about 158 or so, definitely in the cards. Um, but, you know, Apple, and let's go look at Microsoft in a second too, because those are the ones that didn't break down as fast in all this selling that we've had over the last uh, year or so. Um, but now it's kind of like just rallying back up to the uh, bottom side of all this business. It's an interesting spot there. Um, whoops, that's not Microsoft. Ooh, look at Microsoft squeezing into the 21 and the 200. Man, that is that is danger zone, man. I, that's, a, that's a tough one. I mean, technically, I guess with this horizontal right below it at like 237, it's okay. But man, that's a... Oh, man, that's kind of brutal because you, you don't see Microsoft camping below all of its major moving averages very often. I mean, let's look at this chart. I mean, it's pretty much stays above the 55 like forever. Let's go to a monthly. Uh, we're right on the 55 on the monthly. Woo! You can see that's held for since the 08 great financial crisis when it kind of lollygagged around there for about two years before finally breaking out um you can see though when you're in between the 55 and the 21 on microsoft that's not really sexy time man and oh god see this is why long-term trading sometimes scares me because you could just like buy and you're like oh dude all you got to do is buy the dips bro and you just hodl until the market turns well yeah okay well this is cool it only went sideways for seven years Seven years it went sideways to down and you didn't make any money. Nothing. That's why HODL's dangerous and buy the dip mentality is is dangerous for, for long-term trades, man. Because you just never know. You got to let price tell you what's up. And sometimes you're going to be wrong. I mean, actually, that's the only guaranteed in trading is you will be wrong and lose money. There's no other guarantee. So it's just like, let price kind of dictate you, man. Because look at that, and it had a little fake out pump, and then after freaking seven years, it it dumped another 42% in your face, 10 years. And then it went another two years. I mean, look at this. Look at this crap. What is this? 13 years, actually 14 years of sideways, brutal nothingness before it finally broke out. 
and made money. Can you hold an investment for 14 years and make nothing? Probably not. Just some food for thought there. I know I'm going to probably get some flack about that. Uh, Cause you know, people are like, Oh, hodl bro. Hodl for life, bro. Yeah, you just buy the dip and hold dude. It's in the history, dude. Well, it's like, well, yeah, but haven't you ever heard that saying that the past performance doesn't indicate future results? It's very true. Just because it did it back in the day doesn't mean it's going to continue to do it. Um, and also here, let me show you a good example, too, just in the NASDAQ. And, you know, let's go out to the quarter, the three quarters. What's up, Mr. Lopez? Uh, we do it at the very beginning of the stream, the Bitcoin. And then I do it here at the very end, which will be very shortly. I just do a quick wrap up on uh, on Bitcoin. So if you want to just hang out just for a second, I will go over that or you can rewind to the very beginning of the stream and we go through my uh, daily checklist here. But I'm going to finish my thoughts here and then uh, I'll do the wrap up here shortly, probably in the next few minutes. Also, look at this NASDAQ. Dude, you just buy the dip. Oh, shit. Wait. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Damn it. And then look what happens again. Look at this sideways, man. This is a quarterly chart. The, a major index went sideways for over a decade and you made nothing. Unless you were an amazing lucky trader and you bought this dip. Okay, whatever. You made 100%. But most of that just came in within like a year and then it went sideways anyway. But you get the point here. Like it just literally went sideways before continuing the trend for freaking over a decade. And so that's just a lot, man. My stream is lagging. Oh, uh, really? Huh. Well, that's not good. I'm sorry. It says I have good uh, kilobytes and stuff. Hmm. I hope, I hope that's just your um, internet connection. I haven't had anyone else say anything, but let me see. Yeah, I guess I did have a little bit of a drop there for a second. It should be better now um yeah sorry about that uh but anyway let's uh let's just do a little wrap up here i guess my internet service provider is not liking me using too much streaming power but yeah anyway just to wrap that thought up is hodling doesn't isn't the best thing like and i know that comes from crypto um and yeah if you bought like way back in the day and stuff like when bitcoin was sub a thousand sub three thousand and you're holding from that yeah that's fine because you're well in the money but dude, that's like 3% of all people that own crypto that did that. Almost everybody got in here, right? Almost everyone got in here. So just some food for thought. I'm not gonna, I'm not saying we don't know what the hell's gonna happen, but are we just gonna go sideways for 10 years in crypto? No, probably not. But maybe it's a possibility because we don't know shit. We don't know what the future is gonna bring. But I was just bringing up the attention to even like majors. You can go sideways for 10 years and um, nothing can happen. Uh, also, check out uh, one thing to wrap that thought up. Sorry, is um, the 60s, right? When we right before all this super crazy inflation, 60s into the 70s, like we're kind of having now. I mean, look at this chart. Look at this brutal, brutal chart. Which dip do you buy and hold? And which one doesn't shake you out? And which one do you need to have money? I don't know. Look at this. This is for 13 years. It pretty much went sideways, right? Yeah, there's big pumps and dumps, but 13 years before trend continuation. And I mean, these are like 25, 45, 32, 60, almost 50. I mean, this is brutal, man. Weathering this and staying in the market in this kind of price action is really hard. That's why I really think um, watching uh, higher time frames for the regime you're in is super important, man. Because um, you just never know what the future is going to bring. Yeah, it's been going up since we've had 0% interest rates back in the GFC. But, you know, are we still going to be doing that into the future? Who knows, man? All right, let's wrap this biatch up. Mama Bear, what's up? What you doing? It's chilling. It's right up underneath. Let me get my drawings back. Right up under major resistance like a lot of stuff is. We got to it. That's awesome. The weekly close sexy time. I do like that. This is the nicest 
a weekly two consecutive weeks that we've had. Now it is right up against major resistance. This is the bull test right here. This is this is a super critical test this week um, for the bulls. They really need to pump it past twenty four thousand under twenty four k. We can't get too excited. Uh, we're getting the the charts building right now for the bulls, but we're not quite out of the woods, and we're just right up underneath this. So the real test is definitely coming up here. And the longer they keep it above about twenty k the better it will be um, for the bull case. So that's nice. So we are doing something different than we've done since, uh, shit, I mean, when we were way up here above 30K. So that that's definitely a refresher. So keep doing that, bulls, and keep pumping it. Uh, the, the risk about this, though, is this aggression could easily turn into um, a bull-type trap and a bear market rally. This definitely could turn into that so i know no one wants to hear that but it is it's i would say we're like slightly in favor of the bulls like 50 something percent to 40 something percent on the split there of continuation here because this is definitely different this week did close pretty good um so i do like that but we just need more confirmation oh and let me share the hash ribbon chart before i forget i should have showed that earlier but we're gonna do hash ribbon and uh, cause it did some, it's done something that's very interesting here, which is also supporting that 20 ish thousand level. So we just got another buy signal. The last one we had was over here and it wasn't that great cause it literally went down another, uh, 25% from there. But now look where we're at now. We got another buy signal and it was on the, let me see here. Do, 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 do. It was on the 14th. It looks like right around here. And if you look, it's almost at the exact same price at about 20000 and change. So, again, this is very important that bulls hold 20 k here. If they cannot hold 20 k and we start getting comfy back below that, I would be looking for new lows on Bitcoin. So, that's just kind of how the, uh, the chart's reading right now. Right now, we're fine. We're above 20 k But just keep that in the back of your head. Um, and we'll go over some more of the details and stuff uh, on Wednesday's stream. So we're doing a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I haven't nailed the time, but it'll be between 9 and 11. We started this one today at 11. Um, I'm still trying to hash that out with my schedule and stuff like that. So, But anyway, um, interesting that the hash ribbon fired both right almost exactly at the same price. And it's actually actually more like 21000 So let's just call it 21000 That's easier to remember. Very, very interesting. So maybe bulls need to defend 21K and not 19 at this point. And again, let's wrap up with the, oh, geez, January performance since the stream got all foobarred on Friday. Um, January performance. And I have this chart posted on my ideas. If you go to my thing, I posted this a long time ago, like a year something ago, whatever. It's on there. You can check it out. Um, leave some comments, tell me how awesome or stupid I am. But this is super important to me. January is a very, very important month. And it has set bottoms and tops pretty much the entire time in the history of Bitcoin. It only had one little blip in the black swan corona crash, but it was still very much respected with an immediate um, counter trend rally and uh, engulfed and just took off from there. Y'all all remember that. So with that said, this is saying right now that the bottom would be in if we close up here. And that was a bottom around 16-ish K. And if it closes anything above 16K in the next week, which is pretty highly probable, that that was probably the floor. And anything below 16,000, if that does happen, I mean, dude, that opens up the can of worms to like 7 to 13K. Do I think that's highly probable? No, I do not. But, you know, you never.